Hey guys, we're about to jump into the message today, but before we do, special announcement, Transformation Church Conference. That is right, we are getting so close. It is coming up September 10th through the 12th. Listen, you need to get your tickets. This is going to be an amazing time. It's Transformation Conference version 1. What do we mean by that? We mean that you can start right where you are, putting out the first version, the first iteration, even if it's rough, even if it's not all the way put together, we believe that you're gonna get something so special out of this conference. Go to our website, our social media, our app, get your ticket today, because it's going to be amazing. But for now, let's jump to the message. Is anybody ready for the word tonight? All right, get out your notepads, because we are in part two of a series that we are calling, help me, crazy. Now you gotta say it like you mean it, say crazy faith. faith. Oh, I'm gonna like this service tonight. We have been talking about what it looks like to not just live at a place of mediocre Christianity, but what it looks like to actually live out the life that God called us to live of faith. At our church when we started, we wrote down these 12 things that we called our culture, culture code. And one of those things was faith. We would be a church that has faith. And this was the statement we wrote down. We said, we have faith in God, faith in people, and faith for miracles. Somebody say that. We have faith in God, faith in people, and faith for miracles. Just one more time. We have faith in God, faith in people, and faith for miracles. What I'm believing is through this series... That, that that would grow in every single person in this room. That your faith in God would become so planted that when waves of life and issues come, you don't move. That your faith in people would be so optimistic and hopeful that even though they crossed you two times before, that maybe this is the time that God did a work in them and on them. And some of y'all are like, uh-uh, not me, Pastor Mike, because if you cross me once, <laughs> shame on me. <laughs> cross me twice, <laughs> shame on you. <laughs> like, like, like we think that we're about to do this and it's not. No, 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 no. God says, how many times are you supposed to forgive? 70 times 7 a day. Some of y'all thought it was 70 times 7 for a lifetime. <laughs> and it, according to my calculations, I only have 16 people left to forgive, like... It's 70 times 7. Everybody say a day. Yeah. And so you got to extend that same thing and have faith in people. And then this last thing, we're going to have faith for miracles. I don't believe God's greatest miracles were done in the Bible days. I believe that what my Bible says is that greater works. Like, like, like he healed the blind. He cast out demons. He, he pulled taxes out of a fish's mouth. He did all of these different things. And then he looks at us and says, guess what you're going to do? Greater works. See, but I can tell in the room you don't believe it. Because we have really not sold out to this idea of having crazy faith. But I wanted last week to be like the climax of the series. Like, we got the case, case, case. And we shouted and we jumped and we had news reporters and all that other stuff. Now I'm gonna walk you back as a pastor and a teacher today. And, and, and let you understand that you don't just get to a point of crazy faith. Crazy faith is not, not where you start at. You start at the title of my message today. Write it down, baby faith. See, crazy faith is a result of you exercising baby faith. And most people don't want to do anything on a small scale. Like, but there is power in small faith. I'll prove it to you. There was a story in Matthew chapter 17 where the disciples were sent out with authority to be able to heal sick and cast out demons. So they thought they was doing it. And, and, and they're going around touching people. And people are getting healed. And then this father brings his son. And his son literally says, my son is demon-possessed. Can you pray for him? The disciples like, we've done this before. Let's get this baby healed. And they walk up, and they lay hands on him, and nothing happens. And the father, like many of us, when you're working with somebody and they don't know what they're doing, he said, can I please see your manager? Y'all know when the, the person that you're working with can't help you, you ask for the manager or the boss. And, and they bring him to Jesus. And Jesus touches the young man and he's healed instantly. And, and they walk away to the back and, and, and 
And the disciples were like, Jesus, <laughs> uh, why didn't it work when we tried to touch him? And look at his response. He said, you have such little faith. Now, these are people who have walked with Jesus, who have seen him do miracles, who like not an invisible Jesus, like the actual like Jesus. Boy, your skin's so soft today. Like Jesus right there with them. And he said, y'all have such little faith. He said, I'll tell you the truth. If you would have had the faith like a, like something small. Now, I want you to see I have a mustard seed here. This is all the faith you need to get everything that God's purposed in your life to get done. This is it. Well, how do you know that, Pastor Mike? Because Jesus goes on with his analogy. He said, if you would have had the faith of a mustard seed, you could have... Could uh, You could have told, and he looked for the largest thing in the vicinity, and he saw a mountain. He said, you could speak to that mountain and tell it to be thrown into the sea, and it would have to obey you if you had baby faith. And I'm trying to tell somebody in this room tonight that what you need is not as much as you think you do to see the miracle that you want to see. Because I know all of us want that Moses part in the Red Sea faith. We want, we want that faith. We think it only is valid and it's only God when it's an impossible situation and the army's behind us and there's a sea in front of us and we hold up the staff and then the seas part and we see Nemo and Shamu floating past us and that was God. And God was like, yeah, that's crazy faith. But all crazy faith starts with baby faith. Yeah, yeah. And many of us have stopped believing God. This thing is so small that most of y'all think I'm just holding my, my fingers together. And it's so small that I can throw it at you. I just threw tons of faith out there. And it was so small that people looking at me couldn't even recognize it. Come on, come on. But God says, it doesn't matter if nobody else can recognize it. I can see baby faith. I can see what nobody else can see. I can see when you wrote down the vision and made it play. I can see when you went to the bank account and opened it up with 50 cents in it and said one day this will be an account that will be made just for blessing people. I can, oh, y'all don't want to talk to me today. I can see baby faith. And he said, I don't need crazy faith first because faith is a muscle. And most of us have not worked the muscle of faith. It would be the equivalent of me being like, I'm about to hit the gym today for the first time in six months. I'm about to kill this mug. Put 300 on the rack. Three, you heard me, fool, 300. I don't know why you got to get like gangster and thug when you're about, well, you about to lift weights. And it, it wouldn't matter how much I tried. These muscles right here, you see how I'm flexing? <laughs> got my hands. <laughs> These muscles right here would never be able to lift that type of weight because I have not been conditioned for it. It's not that I could never lift it. It's just that I would have to spend time working that muscle to be able to lift that type of weight. There are many believers, even after last week's message, that have gone out and they be like, I'm about to have crazy faith. But you're about to lift something you've not been conditioned for. You're about to try to get something in your life that you've never believed ever before. God's saying, you want me to do this, but you won't even believe when you have a cold. That I could heal you. you I don't, there's nothing wrong with medicine, but you go to the Sudafed and the Tylenol PM and everything else and won't even pray about it. When you know the cross around your neck represents crucifixion, it's not just a chain, it's it's when Jesus went to the cross and died for all of our infirmities and our sins. And he said, by his stripes, we were, no, no, not are, were healed. 
That means you have healing available. He took 39 stripes for your healing, but you will not even believe him or have the faith that it works. So you will go to your medicine cabinet and not even pray about the common cold. But I believe God. Do you? Really? And I'm not coming after you. I'm trying to challenge you that we could see mountains move with this much faith. So maybe the goal for us as a church is not to start off with crazy faith. Maybe the goal is we need to ask God for the ability to consistently live in what? Baby faith. Because if we could ever live in baby faith, we would be able to see God move mountains that nobody has been able to move in our family. Addictions that have been a part of our line for years would be eradicated. Hate that has filled our, our mouth for years and gossip and all. It could be eradicated if we had the faith the size of a mustard seed. Now, you know that didn't hit you. He ducked. like, it, like. <laughs> The crazy thing about it is. The crazy thing about what I'm saying to you today is most of the faith we have in God is in our head. And we think God could maybe do something. But in this series, what I want the faith that you have is to move from your head to your heart and move from your heart to your hands. I don't want you to live a life not seeing what God has promised believers. And so I need you to know that we're going to start this thing at everybody say baby baby faith. Now, let me remind you what crazy faith is. Crazy faith are thoughts and actions that lack reason, but trusting fully in what you cannot explicitly prove. And that's why I told you last week, faith is not a foundation. Faith is the foundation. If you don't have faith, you can't do nothing. If you don't have faith, you can't be saved, according to John 3.16. If you don't have faith, you can't pray. All you do is wish. But when, when, when when you have faith, You stand believing that the Father in heaven is hearing you, and he's answering and working on the affairs of his children, but you have to have faith. And so when I look at this, I said, okay, God, you got to show me how to teach your people how to walk in baby faith. And he said, I had to teach my disciples too. Look at the next chapter of Matthew, Matthew chapter 18, and we're going to start in verse 1. God just had that whole situation where he proved to the disciples that he was who he said he was. And he's like, you got to have faith the size of a mustard seed. Then the disciples start talking crazy amongst themselves. It says, about that time, the disciples came to Jesus and asked a dumb question. Who is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? Like, why do you even need to know that? But many times when when we're insecure in our spot in God, we're always trying to compare ourselves with other people. When you don't have faith that God has a plan for our life, we're always trying to get God to show us that we're better than somebody else. And this goes all the way back to the people who walk with Jesus. So don't think that it's strange when it's happening in your life, okay? He said, who's the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? And Jesus said, um, how am I going to show them this? Come here, little Ricky. Come here. And he called the baby, a child, the scripture says. And he said, come sit right here with me. He said, um... I tell you the truth, unless you turn from your sins, one instruction, repent, and become like little children, unless you get more like babies, like, like unless you come up off of your high horse and humble yourself, he said, you will never not just be the greatest in it, you won't even get into the kingdom of heaven. So anyone who becomes as humble as this little child, as this baby, is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. And anyone who welcomes a little child like this on my behalf is welcoming me. But if you cause one of these little ones, you're about to get the key. This is what makes, this is what Jesus is qualifying this child as a child, a babe. He said, it's a child because if you do this to one of those who trust in me, like the thing about children is they trust adults. Like what makes a child a child is they don't worry about certain stuff that adults worry about. They just trust. Like my daughter, she comes up to me every Sunday because she knows it's a time where daddy's just glad that service went good or something. And every Sunday after church, she says, Daddy, this is Bella. 
you did so good. <laughs> said, thank you, Bella. I said, what's up? Can I get a slushy after we leave here? <laughs> and I said, yeah, baby. We can get a slushy after we leave church. At that moment, I tell her she can get a slushy. She does not think about it again unless she has to remind me that I said. What makes her a child, she didn't ask, have you paid all the bills, Dad? She didn't ask, did, did, did the finances line up with the budget this week? She didn't ask, do we have gas in the car? She didn't ask, did you and mommy discuss this first? When she heard her father say it, she completely trusted it. And God is saying that too many of his children have become so mature that they have stopped trusting his word. And he said, and if you want to be the greatest in the kingdom, you're going to have to have faith like a little child. That trust when God says you're going to be healed. It's not like, well, what what happened if it... I'm going to trust what my father said. I'm going to trust my family is going to be reconciled. I'm going to trust that my child who keeps costing me all this money and disappointing me because they're doing everything against what we taught them. I'm going to trust that somehow, God, you're going to carry their heart back to you. I'm going to trust you. The problem is most of us don't have faith like that. We, we, We hope God will do it, but we don't believe he will. And I'm praying that through this series... That you will begin to believe like these disciples didn't believe at this time. That if the way that you're going to walk in crazy faith is having baby faith. The ability to just trust God at his word. The ability to say, God, if you said it, if you told me you were going to protect me, if you told me you were going to turn all these situations around, if you told me you would equip me for everything you called me to, if you told me that before I was formed in my mother's womb, you knew me and you had a plan for me, a plan to prosper me and not to harm me, a plan to give me a hope and a future, I'm going to take you at your word. I trust you, God, and I put my faith on it. But I can tell by how you've planned your whole life without him that you don't really trust him. Because because all of us have areas in our life that we're mad at God because he didn't line up with our timetable. Come on, because if God was really listening, I'd be married by now. (laughs) She said, ha, 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 ha. Because if God was really about his business, my my children's college would be paid for. I'd have a little money in the 401k. And God says, if you plan me out of your life, you cannot be dependent on me. And the only way you can have faith is to bring it down to a place of dependency. Trust. My babies don't get up and ask where their next meal is coming from. They trust the provider in the house that when they wake up every morning, everything they need will be there. My daughter has never asked, Daddy, are the lights coming on tomorrow? Because she's not even worried about those things because she is trusting. She has faith in her father. And my question to you is, do you have faith in your father? And I need to be very sensitive in this moment as we talk about this, because in in psychological terms, they tell us that a lot of us have association um, 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 habits and tendencies where if we were hurt or damaged by um, somebody that was supposed to be a father figure or a parental figure in our life, then we usually associate that when we start to talk about God. And it's very hard to have faith in something that you can't believe in. And and, and so, so like if you had a deadbeat father or an absentee mother, and they said, I'm going to come pick you up this Saturday, and they don't show up, and then you're like, well, maybe they were busy. And then you wait next Saturday, and then you're like, well, maybe they were really busy. And then, and then you come the next week, and they don't show up, and then you start feeling like maybe they don't want to come. And they don't show up the next time, and you're like, they're never coming. And then they show up at your 18th uh, birthday or your graduation from high school and be like, that's my baby. Look at it. You look just like your daddy. And you're like, shut up. <laughs> like, Because you're like, you haven't been here any of the time. And what happens is you don't, they say, well, I want to take you out for lunch today. And you don't put 
any faith in it because they've disappointed you time and time again. And then you find Christ somewhere along the way and they tell you he's a heavenly father and that you can trust him and he's a good, good father. But what happens is you, you, you can't get past the faith that you've seen in real life. And so you associate what people have done with you and you put it on God. And so when it comes to being dependent or trusting or having faith, it's very hard to do because you've never seen it in real life. And all I'm asking you on behalf of God is could you take him off of the standard of humans? Could, could you please release what they did to you and give God an opportunity to be Abba? The father who will never disappoint you. The father who will be there in the midst of a trial. Because that's the only way you can truly trust. You can't have faith in something that you don't believe in. And I ain't even talking about crazy faith. I'm talking about baby faith. And today I believe God's changing some of the ideas that we've had. And you're going to be able to walk in this. So how do I do that, Pastor Mike? Well, let me just give you a couple of points to, so you can walk away with something today as we start this series. Number one, faith in God comes first. Like, like, like a lot of us have faith in a lot of things. But I need to tell you, if you're going to really walk in baby faith that turns into crazy faith, you need to realize that faith in God comes first. You have to believe that it's God's will for you to be healed, delivered, to prosper, to live a life that is abundant. That, because if you don't believe it, you won't expect it. And if you don't expect it, you won't hope for it. And if you don't hope for it, you have now taken the fuel of faith. Because remember what faith is according to Hebrews 11.1. 1. Faith is the confidence in things that we hope for. And so what happens is most of us have stopped hoping, therefore we stop expecting, therefore when we stop expecting, we stop believing, and then we don't believe so we don't have faith. And what ends up happening is God's got a bunch of hollow Christians who come to church and don't have the one thing that pleases him. Y'all know what the Bible says? It says it's impossible to please God without faith. Not because he's trying to give you an identity complex because when you accept Jesus into your life and you give him um, um, your whole life, he said your, your identity is secure. You're a son. You're a daughter. He said, but it doesn't please me because what pleases me is my will being done on the earth through your life. And when you don't have faith, I can't do what I plan for you in the earth. And so a lot of people are going to heaven but living in hell. A lot of people... Your eternity is secure because you had faith enough to believe for salvation, but you do not have faith enough to walk in purpose because you don't trust that God will hold you up. I'm teaching a whole bunch right now, and I'm just like, I'm, I'm trying to hope it gets into your soul right now. That that is the reason we have to start at baby faith. That you have to start believing that God has good things for me. That when I read the word, that applies to my life. Even if it didn't apply to anybody else, and I don't see the results of it, there's something different about me. And when you start to believe that, you put faith in God first. Let me tell you another story that happened in Matthew chapter 11, verse 22. Jesus is walking with the disciples and Jesus is hungry. And I like that. Just it makes me feel good that all my problems in this midsection, maybe Jesus had a belly. And because uh, I'd be hungry. Um, anyway, but Jesus was hungry one day and he was walking past the fig tree. He's like, oh, man, I'm about to get me some fig newtons right here. And, and uh, he went and he was like, hold on. The thing that's supposed to be producing fruit is no longer producing fruit. This isn't how I created it. You'll never produce fruit again, shrivel up and die, and didn't break stride. It just kept walking like a gangster into the city. The disciples like, wow, that's interesting, John. Did you see that? <laughs> Peter, wow. Whew. But they didn't see it shrivel up and die at that moment. But they heard because God is Jesus and Jesus is faith. He spoke to something. Do y'all know how the world was created? It said by faith, the worlds were formed. Like it was by faith. He spoke it into existence. So now Jesus is here and he tells something, shrivel up and die. And the disciples are like, okay, Jesus is telling stuff to shrivel up and die. They come back the next day and Jesus walked past that same fig tree and is like, yeah. And then, <laughs> and then Peter sees it and is like, yo, 
Jesus! Bro! <laughs> now, I don't know if you know you did this, Jesus. But yesterday when we walked by, you was a little tizzy. I think you were, you, you, you're not yourself when you don't eat. I think Snickers made a, a, a commercial. You were hangry and you spoke to it. It's dead. And I believe Jesus gave him the look that he gives us many times when we're surprised when he does what he says. Like, I don't know, in my mind, like sometimes like, God, you did it. And he's like. <laughs> and look what he said to him in verse 22. He said, have faith in God. Amen. Like, like, like that's why I said faith in God comes first. He was like, y'all ain't got no faith in me. Y'all walk with me. You've seen me meet your needs. You've seen my grace pour over your life. You've seen me save us time and time again, like many people in this room. You've seen me let you into doors you weren't supposed to get in. You've seen me keep your mind when your family was crazy. You saw me make a way out of no way. Have faith in God. And I feel like he got a little perturbed because, like, like he said, I tell you the truth. And back in Bible days, like, that's like, I can't believe y'all. I tell you the truth. I can't believe y'all. He said, man, I'm going to tell them, you could say to this, uh, and he found the biggest thing he could find again. You could say to this mountain, this is the second time in two chapters back to back where he has told them if they just had a little baby faith that they could speak to the biggest thing around. And command it to move. You think depression has a hold of your life? You think divorce is going to ravage your family? I feel this thing. You think that financial debt is going to come in? God says if you had a baby faith, you could speak to the biggest thing in your life. And you could tell it to be lifted and thrown into the sea. And look what the Bible says. And it will. Everybody say will. will. It will happen. But you must really believe it. Like that's why I keep coming back to like, but do you really believe? But, but do you really have faith? I know you come to church, but, but, but do you believe on Monday? Because I know like, I know breakthrough is coming. But on Tuesday. By faith, I see a miracle, but on Wednesday. And many of us do not take the faith that we feel and we have charged in this atmosphere to that, to that job we don't like tomorrow. And God says, that's where I want to show myself strong. That's where I want you to believe that peace can come into this atmosphere. That's where I want you to stand up and be my representative. And you thought that your faith was for the church? He said, this is a huddle. We got to go run the play. What would happen if a football team just stayed in the huddle? Y'all, we going to run this blue point two, six nine up the middle. <laughs> but we never ran the play. And so people sitting here like, yeah, we about to kill them. Yeah, we about to woo, woo, woo. And they jumping around. And the other team like, that's what the church looks like. A bunch of people like, I know, I know, I know. If you know the play, run it. If you have faith, uh, if you have faith, show us. If you believe the word of God, live the word of God. Run the play. Look at three people and say, run the play. Come on, run the play. Run the play. Either God is our provider or he's not. Either he's Jehovah Jireh or he's not. Even he's the God with us or he's not. Run the play. And that's what he's telling the disciples. He's like, man, if y'all would, would just listen to me, 
and run this play, you got stopped and blocked in the last chapter because you didn't have enough faith. And now you're sitting here surprised that when I ran the play, it worked. And he said, I'm trying to show you these things so that you can have faith. Verse 24, he said, I tell you, you can pray for anything. Do you really believe that? Because most of us don't. For a very long time in my Christian life, I felt like certain things were below the God care meter. Like, like. God don't care that I get a good parking spot here. (laughs) But then when I looked at this Bible, I was like, do I really believe this or not? Because it says, I tell you, you can pray for anything. And and, and I don't know, we want to pray for like, John needs a healing. He has stage four cancer and will die tomorrow. Everybody get together. Let's pray. That is definitely the right time to pray. But also the right time to pray is when somebody, (laughs) (laughs) things come to my mind and then I have to tell myself, nope, don't say that. (laughs) Don't say that. So y'all just seeing me think out loud, all right. But but it's also time to pray. Okay, I'll tell it like this. (sighs) No, I'm just going to tell the story I told earlier, okay? I'm just going to tell it. So my wife... um, My wife, when we were first in our relationship, she's going to kill me. (sighs) Okay, so I'm just trying to think where I'm going to sleep tonight. So (laughs) So when when me and Natalie started dating, and I think we were engaged to be married, I read the scripture, and my faith was building. Like, my faith was building, building. And so I started really putting my weight on these scriptures and like I read this Mark chapter 11 scripture and it says you can pray about anything and my wife was complaining to me one day because her eyebrows had went rogue (laughs) like she started losing hair on her eyebrows and one eyebrow was karate chopping the other and it just wasn't acting right and you know for a lot of y'all like oh my god that's so oh like but I really believe this because I was hearing her talk about it. And I looked at the scripture and said, you can pray about anything. And I know some of y'all, y'all wouldn't even bother God with this. But you're living beyond your privilege or below your privilege. So I asked Natalie straight up. I said, do you want eyebrows? I said, because the Bible tells us that we can pray about anything. She said, baby, I want some eyebrows. I said, in the name. (laughs) I hit hit that. I I, I smoothed in my brows. I'm not lying to y'all. I'm telling you the truth. And we prayed that God would allow whatever follicles were in her hair that weren't were, were dying or anything. We prayed them things back to life. And see people like, ah, <laughs> but she got eyebrows now. So you can hate if you want to, but prayer work. Do you believe it? It ain't where she want them to be, but they ain't where they used to be. You hear what I'm saying? And, I, and I'm being funny right now, but I'm dead serious. The simple fact that Jesus himself, this is in red in your Bible, says you can pray about it and you still don't believe it. You don't even have baby faith. Like you want crazy faith for God to give you a company doing eyebrow makeup, but you won't even pray that he could let your own eyebrows. And I'm using it, apply it to your life. Apply it to your situation. Maybe crazy faith is a sum of you consistently working baby faith. When I wrote down that the Spirit Event Center would be Transformation Church, and that we would pay for it and $10.5 million, that wasn't my first time exercising faith. 
That was crazy faith. But when I was in middle school, I read the scripture that said, write the vision down and make it plain. And so I started drawing Jordan tennis shoes. Funny again, huh? Ha, 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 ha. Except I became a prophetic artist. Because everything that I would take my time on it, I would make sure the lines was right. I'd use protractors. I would trace. See, the thing is, I wanted to make sure what I had, I presented to God in excellence. I don't have money. I don't have any of these things. But it was funny. But I was working my faith muscle. And when one shoe went from my paper to my feet, I started drawing another one. And, and, and what that was happening is for some reason, as vain as it was, I believe God was allowing it to happen wow. because I was building my faith That's great. that I could pray and believe and follow his word on anything wow. and it could happen. So then I graduated from tennis shoes and I told my dad I wanted a custom made drum set. And my father, I thank God for my parents. Because they never crushed my faith. Parents, hear me. Just because you didn't have the faith to believe for it. Do not tell your children what they can or cannot do. Y'all see them golf claps over there? Well, it's not realistic. That is not. And they will have exactly what you did. But if you take the limits off of them and point them to the word of God, they may be able to live the life that you wish you was living right now. I'm going to need security as we leave. The one thing about my mom and dad, they never crushed my faith, even when it seemed crazy. I was 15 years old, and I said, I want a custom drum set, Dad. He said, how much did it cost? I said, $8,000. Now, I want you to imagine your 15-year-old self telling your parents, whoever they are, I want to buy something for $8,000. My father said, wow, son. He said, well, if you have the faith to believe it, God can do it. That's all I needed. I needed to permission to dream. All I needed was somebody to give me permission to allow God to do it in my life. So what did I do? The only thing I knew how to do, start drawing again. I didn't have no money. I didn't have no job. I was in high school. So I took protractors and rulers, and I had one piece of paper. I had people in here who saw me do this, and I created the most beautiful drum set on a piece of paper you've ever seen in your entire life by somebody who can't draw. <laughs> and I would show everybody, this is what God's going to b- provide for me. This is what God's going to provide for me. This is what God, I used to carry it on the outside of my binder. You know the binders where you could slip something into, see some of y'all don't know nothing about that because you didn't take books to school. But for the rest of us, I slipped it into the outside. So when I was walking down the hallway, people would stop and be like, what's that? Oh, this is the drum set that I'm going to get one day. My 16th birthday. One year later, my dad said, we got something for you. I said, what you mean you got something for me? He said, you know that money that you've been saving up? I had saved $2,000 at 15 years old for this thing that I didn't even know could happen. He said, give me the money you've been saving. I gave it to him. He said, go look outside. And there was the most beautiful eight-piece custom-made drum set that I've ever seen in my life. And he said, your faith produced that. Now watch, now watch, now watch. Because some of y'all pessimists in here be like, no, your parents produced that. My parents was broke. It was my faith that attracted the finances through them. They were not the source. They were a resource that God used to be able to make his word come to pass in his child's life. And so many of us do not have the faith to believe that God could do anything like that for us. But I'm here to say, let faith arise. Let faith arise. Start hoping again that God could do something like this for me. He said, I tell you the truth. Pray for anything. And if you believe that you've received it, I need you to get this in your mind. That you have to not just only think God can do that, 
You need to visualize that you have already received it. God's giving us a formula to walk out baby faith. He said, I've given you an amazing tool called your imagination. It's the only thing where you can be sitting in the exact opposite of what you want and close your eyes and see yourself receiving what you want. Think about it. You can be in a full cast and you can close your eyes and you can see yourself healed and walking again. And you can see yourself running again. God says, I need my people to believe they've received it. Some of y'all need to just turn off everything and start stay in the apartment that is where you can cook and use the bathroom and sleep within one arm's length. You need to think about that and then you need to b- believe that you've received keys to your new home and that it's paid for and that you're sitting there having barbecues in July and you'll fe- see y'all don't even believe it over here. You need to believe that you're healed. You need to believe, you need to see that your family is around the Christmas table and everybody's laughing and giggling and there's no arguments and Uncle John ain't drunk outside and and y'all know we got an Uncle John. (laughs) But you don't even believe you've received it. He's given us the formula. And if we could ever do that, start using the imagination God's given us to visualize what he's called us to have. He said, you can have anything. He said, if you believe that you've received it, it will be yours. I want you to say he's not using like qualifiers, like it might be. It could one day be. If the sky is 78 degrees and it feels good outside, he said, it will be yours. Ah. But when you are praying, just just make sure this one thing, because a lot of y'all about to get disqualified in this one verse 25. Because I could have stopped it, but I gotta I gotta pastor you. But when you're praying, oh shoot. First forgive anyone you are holding a grudge against. Dang it! Because now 75% of you wouldn't be able to walk in baby faith. Not crazy faith, baby faith, because you won't let those people go. He's saying the thing that is the sedative to your faith is the people you won't release. Your your faith can't go to where I want it to go because you won't forgive your father who wasn't there. And yes, he did you wrong. And yes, He didn't deserve to treat you like that. And yes, you have a right to be frustrated for the rest of your life. But that means that you will forfeit the blessing of God for the rest of your life too. And this at Transformation Church 2019 is the year of what? Release. And God's saying, if you would release them, I would release it. If you would release them, I would release you. If you would release them, I would release my favor and my blessing and my influence on your life. But you won't forgive. So your faith is useless. I wonder if we could ever become a church that will let people go. Because if we would let people go. That's why my wife was like, why are you so friendly with them? And you know what they did. I can't let them stop what God's doing in my life. I don't, I don't, I don't, have, to be, uh, uh, I don't have to be all around them and be like, oh, da, 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 da. But I'm not going to harbor anything in my life, in my heart, that's going to stop my faith from working. And that's what some of y'all came for today. You, you, you want crazy faith, but you can't even qualify for baby faith. Because unforgiveness is canceling out the promise of God in your life. So what do you want us to do, Pastor Mike? I want faith to arise in your life. How is that going to happen? I'm going to give you one point, and then we're going to pick up next week, and it's going to be crazy. Okay? Read your Bible. No, that can't be it, Pastor Mike. You see them claps? It's like... Okay. Oh, wow. (laughs) Yeah, I found out that there's only way faith happens and is ignited in you. 
And it's found right here <laughs> in Hebrews 11, chapter 1. It says, now faith. No, 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 no. Not Hebrews chapter 11, 1. Let's go to, I'm going to go to Romans 10, 17. It says, so then faith comes by hearing. And hearing by the word of God. It's amazing how illiterate Christians are in the one book that has all our answers. We think it's a historic book. We think it's like a fiction novel. Like, oh, I like that David and Goliath one. I like that one. That's a good one. And this is the only book that when you read it, it reads you. This is the only book that you can be feeling temptation and you start reading it. And the Bible says in Psalms 119, how does a young man and young woman keep his way pure? He hides himself in the word of God. You'd be like, just don't call me. Don't do that. No, no, no. You need to read your Bible. <laughs> you hot and bothered, it'll cool you all the way down. Y'all want to be fake in the building today. Open up, open up Acts when you get a booty call. When you're angry, put Proverbs up. When you're about to do something you know ain't right, like you feel it, pull up Matthew and see if it won't start speaking to you. But the problem is our faith is not built in the only thing that can build our faith. We build our faith in other things. And that's why you got to understand that faith is a principle that God has placed in the earth. So if faith comes by hearing, it's your faith is built in whatever you're hearing. So if you're hearing a bunch of doubt and lies and division, your faith is getting built in that thing. If you're trying to stay pure, but you bump in every sex song and I like the beat and this is the rap and this is the thing and, and all of your relationships in like a Beyonce song. To the left, to the left. You've been in 15 relationships. But it's because faith comes by here. And that's all you've been hearing. You've been building your faith in something that cannot help you to stand. You get angry and all your relationships in like Game of Thrones. Because faith comes by here. And it's built in whatever you're hearing. And so many of us would prefer our preference over God's purpose. And he was like, man, if you could just get faith like a mustard seed. I don't need crazy faith from you. All I need to do what I want to do in your life is baby faith. What would happen if we just were a church who didn't like, like act like we were saved and act like God was doing a miracle in our life and act like it, but really walked it out? So what you want us to do, Pastor Mike? This week, everybody under the sound of my voice and watching online, I want you to read your Bible for 15 minutes every day. I love this. Pastor Mike, I could do an hour. You don't. You don't. You're more consistent at checking Facebook than you are seeking his face. So, so I'm, I'm, not trying to, I'm not trying to create a crazy faith moment. Church, I want us to read our Bible for four hours every day. Cut off TV. Cut off social media. Cut. Let's not start with crazy. Yeah, yeah. Let's start with baby. So Everybody in this room can take 15 minutes. Yeah. 15. And read your Bible this week. Well, Pastor, I don't know where to start. Great. That's why we have a team and a church here that's going to help you. You can go to the Instagram, the website, the app, and all this week starting tomorrow, you'll be able to find places to be able to read your Bible. I'm just asking what would happen if your faith was built all week. And we came back in here next Sunday night. There would be miracles happening in worship. Nobody would even have to hear Pastor Mike speak 
because your faith would be as soon as I touch with one other believer. My, my, the word says if two or three of us are gathered in his name, everybody else could leave. He said God is in the midst. Matter of fact, I, I got goosebumps. I don't even got to make it to church. I just need to call one or two people who actually believe that God can do a miracle and my baby faith will turn into crazy faith. But if we can't get it on the small level, we'll never get it on the big level. Can we commit to that this week? I said, can we commit to that this week? Okay. I want to pray for every person in this room. Because today, I told Charles earlier, I wanted to ride the wave of what we did last week. I, we was going to be jumping around here doing jumping jacks flips. I had a message that would have had us tore up. And the Holy Spirit said, that would be bad parenting. If you keep your kids on a high, but don't teach them why. And I'm not calling nobody a kid, but I am the spiritual shepherd at this house. And it is my job to make sure that we're growing. We're going to see more crazy miracles. But maybe God would be more pleased with not just one-offs of crazy faith. Maybe he would be more pleased with consistent baby faith. Hands lifted all over this building. Father, I pray for every person under the sound of my voice today, something has started on the inside of us. God, I'm thanking you for every person who have felt, Father, that maybe you forgot about what their situation is or what they have to do. Father, I thank you that you care about the details of their life. Today, let faith arise on the inside of us. I declare and I believe, Father God, that you are giving us the hope to believe in you. Not just the fake facade of believing, but truly putting our weight on the things and the promises that you say in your word. This week, as we read our word for 15 minutes every day. I thank you that faith would arise on the inside of us, Father. I thank you that we would believe your word. Father, I thank you that we would trust you again. And God, I thank you that our baby faith would turn into crazy faith. I come against depression. I come against doubt. I come, Father God, even against unbelief, Father God, that would make us say, this is crazy. This won't work, Father God. It's crazy until it happens. And today I thank you that Transformation Church and Transformation Nation will be a group of people that will fully believe you. And we will see crazy faith. But it will start with our baby faith in Jesus' name. If you believe it, will you give God a shout of praise in this? Oh, come on. If you believe it, why don't you give God one shout of praise in this place? Listen. Just sit down for one second. This is the most... Um, important part of our our service if you don't have to leave just stay right there because people are about to get ministered to if you're in this room and you've never accepted Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior this is about to take faith like because some of y'all like well I don't understand like how do you believe in a God that you've never seen I feel you but you've never seen wind either and ain't nobody ever seen Wi-Fi but you believe in it. Could it be that, that there's something so amazing that's right in front of you, but you just have to receive it? Today, would you bow your head and close your eyes? Everybody all over the building. And if you want to give your life to the only one who really knows what to do with it, in just a moment, we're going to pray. But it's the, it's the one greatest decision that I ever made. It took me from being a liar somebody who was addicted to pornography, a manipulator, a bad person on the inside. And it took me from, from not, not to being a perfect person, but a progressing person. And today God wants you, he wants you to know that his grace is extended for you. If you're saying, pastor, I want to put my faith in Jesus Christ, or I want to put my faith back in Jesus Christ today. On the count of three, I just want you to lift your hands all over this building and online. I want you to do that. There's hands already going up. One, two, three. There's hands. I see you, ma'am. I see you, sir. I see you, sweetheart. I see you, ma'am. I see you, ma'am. I see you, ma'am. You can put your hands down. I see you, ma'am. Today, we're a family at Transformation Church. We don't pray alone. <laughs> There's power in our prayer together. So I want everybody to pray this prayer. Say, God, thank you for sending your son just for me. I believe he died. He lived. And he rose again just for me. Come into my life and take control. Change me. Renew me 
transform me. I'm yours. In Jesus' name, amen.